right. Well, after a very, very, very long winter, we finally managed to get out again to have a, an on-the-box feature. So what we've done today, we've come to, um, we've come to Old Hull Fisheries, which is uh, a venue we've not used before, I don't think. Don't know, but I don't think, we, haven't, we definitely haven't done a match here anyway. So it was a bit of a spare the moment thing, so everything's a bit rushed. But, so what I'm gonna go through is a nice, yeah, a bit different this place, a lot more variety of species, but I still need to fish for carp. So I'm here to show you how I'm gonna go about a nice little easy midweeker. Uh, again, keeping things really simple. What I'm gonna to do today, I'm gonna to fish, uh, I'm gonna fish a bit of meat short. I'm gonna talk a lot about what I do to my meat and how I feed my meat. We're gonna fish some edges, because I've got a lovely edge down this left, hand, um, down my left hand bank. And we're gonna start across just for a few quick fish. But I'm already late as usual, so the whistle's just gone. So I'm gonna start on my far bank, and we're gonna see how it goes from there. Right, so as usual, Jamie's late. But what I'm after is a few quick fish if I can. So I'm just gonna start tight to the far bank. I plumbed up, and it's beautiful to be fair. I've probably got two foot across. So I've gone with a strungy outy, a little bit strungy outy rig. I've gone with a little 4B12s, just with some strung out tens to give me a, a slow-ish fall. Yeah, I, I still want it to get down fairly quick and I want it to be on the bottom. But just to start with, I want a nice slow fall, just so I can catch a few F1s, or a few little carp more than F1s. I'm just gonna give me pot a little dunk. So rushed as usual. So what I wanna begin with is just feeding one line. Something I talk about all the time, just having one line fed just to make sure any fish that are feeding come to my bait. Last thing I want to do is be splitting them all over the place. So just by having this one line tight in the shallow water, and taps on pellets on that. And see how that floats it, probably too low. Let's have a look. So it's quite nice over there. What have I, what I've plumbed off? I've plumbed up tight to the far bank, which is where I'm going to start. I'm starting there today because of how high the pressure is. It's really warm. I'm going to bite straight away then. So it's really warm, been really hot the last few days. The fish have been spawning. And I really can't see anything being in, in deeper water. I think all the fish are going to be wanting to feed tight across or tight in the edges. So we're usually, I'd start a little bit further down in probably about three foot. Today, we've gone for it. I've gone straight in the far bank just to see. So there have been a few signs while I've been setting up. I've seen a few fish milling about right next to that mud, which gives me a good indication that that's where a few fish want to be to start. So we've gone straight over there to see what happens. Like I, said, I don't want this to be, be my main line today. So we're after, so the lakes we're on, we're on, what are we on today? We're on Prospects, Lucky Dip, and this one, which is Lower Bembo, which I think I don't know where I want it today. You know I mean? I've, not, I've only fished one match on this lake before. So it's a nice steady lake. You normally need about £100 to win on here. So that gives me a good day's fishing. But I, I did fancy the top end of Lucky because I was coaching on there the other day. I think it's around seven or eight. And there were a lot of fish down there. That would be, if I could pick a peg today, that's where I'd want to be up that top end. But that said, I don't know enough about it. So who knows? So nothing's happening just yet. I've gone quite positive with my rigs today. So this is quite a, well, definitely upper bend, but it's quite a carp dominated place with proper commons and mirrors. So I've gone a little bit heavier than I normally would. I've gone with a, like a medium gauge wire hook so I can pull a bit to an 013 bottom, which again is a little bit heavier than what I'd normally go with. So whether that'll affect what I catch or not, I don't know. So I remember last time I was on here, I felt like I fished a little bit too heavy, a little bit too positive. And I thought I won't do that next time, but I am. Don't know why. But no, in all fairness, it was a bit colder then. And I felt a more delicate match. It, it had caught me a bit more. But we are going to go for it because I'd say the weights have been so good. I'm actually just going to stick a dolly butt on just to be a bit more comfortable. Yeah, the weights have been so good. It only takes a second to to pop a little light hook length on if I need to. I say I'm already wondering where I've messed up and I should be fishing slightly deeper to begin with. 
Well, I've I've got a nice step there. I've got two foot, just under two foot. So there's no reason why I shouldn't catch in that pretty much instantly. So we'll give it, give it a couple more minutes. So there's been one in my peg. I think there's one in my peg now. And if nothing happens, then I'm going to make some noise and try and attract some fish into my peg. So just to begin with, I like to cup just to see what's present. Because by cupping and sneaking my baiting sort of, it stops getting the fish too excited, doesn't bring too many into my peg. Put the fish in there maybe. Yeah, and say so I can get a nice steady start sometimes doing that. But if the volume of fish aren't present and I need to attract some, then the catapult's got to come out and I've got to make some racket on the surface, if you like, and drag some new fish into my swim. That wind's getting up a bit. It's quite, quite weird. It's like it's on me back, the wind, but it keeps coming from me left and coming from me right and swirling all over the place. So I may get a bit frustrated today holding 16 metres of carbon all day. So I've gone with, to begin, just some four mil hard pellets. So they're nice and selective. I shouldn't catch too many little fish because there's plenty of silvers in here. So we've gone with it. A four mil pellet just to begin with. I'd say I'm going to ping some over, I'm going to cup some over yeah, and see what I catch doing that. If it doesn't work, then I'm going to swap to potting in a little trap of micros instead. So it all depends how quick fish are coming into my swim. So if there's not a lot of fish about and I get a catty out and start blasting it, then I very quickly end up with a big area to feed and not many fish to catch over it and then I don't catch much as a result. Around. I've not seen, not seen much happening yet. We winged that one in, didn't we? So we winged him in. Let's see what he is. So I've gone with our white stuff. I've gone slightly heavy just because the the stamp of carp in here last time, if I remember, were a bit bigger. That the, they were averaging like five to eight pound, if I remember. There's some other fish as well. He's going in he. Really doing some pulling this one. I don't think it was a big one when I hooked it. You never know. See, I think that is as well. Maybe the fit. Oh no, that fella chap over there's had one. Lovely stamp if we can catch them all day. We don't need many of them at all to get to say a hundred pounds me target today. I think you're gonna want 90 to 110 to win. Oi. Yeah, 90 to 110 should be enough. Yeah, I'm after catching that one now. I am gonna be patient. I was gonna I was gonna get catty straight out and really go for it but I've changed my mind. I mean, just because there's not a lot being caught, I can say it's a decent size of fish. Definitely don't mind catching them. Nice three and four pounders all day. So if I don't need to feed with the catties to attract fish, I'm not going to. So all it's going to do is get the catapult out is increase me, my little area. Yeah, at the moment I'm feeding on probably a six inch square with my cup. As soon as catties get involved, I probably, <laughs> you're looking at about two or three foot square. I mean, at 16 meters, it's impossible to keep it any tighter than that. So it's easy for your little single hook bait to get lost in a three foot area of feed. So we're not gonna do that just yet. Same the other lines I'm gonna to feed today, keep things really simple. I'm gonna fish meat on a top four, just before it drops off. You've got quite a weird edge here, it's like quite a, it's not flat, but it's a very, very slow slope on the inside. Going from about two foot touching the bank. And where I get to on my top four, it's probably about three and a half foot. So it's not gone and then it, a metre past that, it really does drop down to about six foot. I don't fancy catching anything in deep water today, just with the pressure being so high. 
So say I'm going with, I'm going to fish a short meat line, four metres out, really close. And other than that, it's all edge fishing later on. Which I've plumbed up a couple of edges. I've plumbed up a short one that I can feed by hand. Really, really close down the edge here where I'm getting 12 inch, quite a shallow on that one. And then the other line's me, me next pallet to me left. So me being a right-hander, I find all my margins so much easier to fish if I'm fishing to my left. So it's easier to hold your pole across your body and it, it just makes things smoother. Well, maybe that's just a, a personal thing, but for me, any right-handers, better going to the left if you can. Don't get me wrong, I've got that in case. But in this case, my me, me right-hand edge isn't actually as nice. It's very difficult to get down there. Nice, it's being weird. It's say two bites i don't feel as if one's really been in my peg since this last feed so i might have to catty oh no i'll give it two more minutes so if i can catch one of them every five or six minutes if that's how long i've got to wait great if they're not coming in my peg quite fast enough that was a fish then and I may need to just make a little bit of noise and then cut it straight down as quickly as possible once I feel the fish are there. So there's not a lot getting caught yet, so I don't need to panic or nothing. I've not seen another carp get caught yet, to be honest. It's like identical to the last one, just a nice steady sit and wait. That's not an F, that's not a calf. A little fish. It's a little and not what I was expecting them today. A nice relaxed net limit here as well. I think it's put three nets in, and as long as you split them, you can put whatever you want in. Which I like them. It saves <laughs> it saves me getting confused, keeping track of what to what. Just sort that elastic out a little bit. Just a couple of inches off that. Lovely. I think I should have done, which I haven't. I'm going to make a quick hole in the base of my pot by putting a little hole in. I thought I'd done this on most of my pots. Put a couple of holes in the base. Now, where I'm putting that water in to um, make my pellets sink, just to make sure they sink, I can put my pellets in now and save me sitting there and like draining the water off. I can just dunk it and it'll do it itself. So as I ship out, that water will slowly drip out. I mean, pellets will be lovely and sinky by the time you get there. Because the thing with our pellets is, if you wet them beforehand and then try and put them on the hook, yeah, put them on the band, sorry, they can be a little bit flippery. So by doing that, I can make sure that everything sinks really, really well. And make sure it goes down, because I don't want them say, coming up just yet. Let's say for this line, I've... I haven't actually made a deeper rig yet. One for further down the slope if I need it. I should have, but I'm a bit crap at getting ready, so I didn't have time for that. So the only two rigs I've actually set up for the far bank are tight to the far bank and a sucking rig, or what, like a shallow sort of rig. I mean, a little tiny 4x10s float that I've got set at about six inch to start with. And that's for catching me suckers for when I do get catty out and I start putting a few pellets tight against that grass you often find a bigger fish come up sucking at that and so for later obviously that won't happen until i start catting but for later i've got that rig to nick a few big bonus fish but that's whether they, they come up sucking or not we shall see yeah, it's happening that's a little bit of a loony one i don't like him doing that Hell, he's angry, isn't he? He's in the mouth as well. Yeah, 
It's a good shot we didn't go with the, the pink stuff today, Rich, isn't it? Need a proper no panic today with anything, just a, a steady match he's gonna see me with. 100 pound and in the in the gang. So be careful how it kites. It's the only obstacle I've really got on my peg today, these lilies down this left hand bank. So as long as I'm sensible, this shouldn't be too much of an issue. Steady, steady, steady. Mm, it's like a nice, proper, lovely stamp if they're all going to be this big. Didn't catch these last time I was on here. Last time I caught great big ones. Or some F1s. Some Barvel as well, I think. These are, without doubt, the best scooping landing nets in the world. Right, so we're going to plod on with that and see what happens for a bit. Right, well I've had half an hour and I've got 13 pounds, 13 pounds I've got. Yeah, let's go for that. I think I've got about five or six fish, I've just had a decent one then, I've just had one about five and a half pound, but it was foul locked. But we got it in, so it's all good. Um, but at the moment it's quite negative, so not a lot of fish are being caught, I've seen, so Lewis is over there, he, he, proper knows what he's doing up here, he's venue expert. He's had three or four carp. So very similar to what, what I've got. But he started short, interestingly, where it's a little bit deeper, which has surprised me a bit. I didn't really fancy that, but maybe to start with, there are a few fish to be caught there before the, before the temperature gets up. But however, my peg, it's quite boring, to be honest, or I, I'm just fishing it very, very negatively to begin with. I've still not picked catapult up. Still just cupping in sort of 10-ish pellets. And just waiting for the fish to come into my bag. I say there doesn't feel there doesn't seem to be lots racing in. I'm not getting a bite straight after feeding, I'm sitting and waiting for excuse me, a couple of minutes. And then one's coming in. But say I'll take it if I can catch say 20 pounds an hour's target, of course, for hundred pound. So after however long I've had, I think I've had about half an hour, maybe a little bit longer, I'm well on track for that. Two more carp and we'll be there. So like I say I'm still I'm very close to making some noise. But I keep shouting at myself to, to not pick that catty up. I often do that. I often find that I'm in too much of a rush to fill me peg full of fish. And it can only ever be detrimental that it can only either like i said before reduce the or reduce the competition between fish by maxima making the uh, area bigger that you're fishing over but it could also send them nuts by bringing too many in the peg so i do i've got to keep shouting at myself and not do that so i don't need it i'm not fishing for for 250 pound of fish it's a nice hundred pounds today is all that's going to be needed i think so if I plod in, there's much less chance of me messing my peg up. It's nice and steady, they are coming in. It's almost like clockwork. Every five minutes, one comes into my peg. A decent-ish stamp. So I've had a few different ones. I've had, a, I've had one little F1. I've had a couple of pound carp. I've had a couple of three pound carp. And then one decent one. This feels like one of them little pound and a bitters. So I do like fishing for oh, a little bit more, two pound. That's pound and a half. Eh? I do like fishing for proper carp. So much more than F1s during the summer, just because you can 
you can control them, you can get them to do what you want them to do, you can keep them on the bottom. They're a lot less flipping moody than F1s. Just gonna cloth over them expanders. Yeah, they're a lot easier to keep on the bottom and I think the best thing about proper carp is the greedier, so they eat more. So them 10 pellets that I'm feeding, that little pinch of sort of 10 hard ones, they're getting eaten. I mean, a carp comes into my peg, that little one that's in my peg then, has probably ate the vast majority of them pellets. So that water's not draining out quite quickly enough. So I'm just gonna make a bit of a bigger hole in my pot. We want a proper hole if we can. That little triangle off. That's going to make it drain out nice and quick. Yeah, lovely. So much better that. Mm. I was just I was getting to me peg the last couple of casts, and it had a load of water in, so I don't want that. So I've just started as well. When I caught that better one a couple of casts ago. For the first time, we just fed a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of meat short. Literally just six or seven pieces. Just I don't want to put any volume of bait on the bottom on that short line. I just want to give them a tiny, tiny little taste. Because I don't know how that my short line's going to be, how it's going to fit into my plans. Whether it's going to be somewhere I settle on and catch a load of fish later on. Or whether it's going to be a, a nicker fish peg. Where I can drop on it, catch one or two that have settled in the area. And then I've got to leave it that often you find that deeper water can be like that this time of year. But we will see. So just by giving them a little taste, there's a chance after an hour, if I need to, because this line isn't throwing enough fish up, I can just drop on it, just have a look, see if I get a quick one. If not, leave it and step my feed right back and just use it as a late on line for the last couple of hours. Or if I catch a couple, I know that I'll be able to just rotate it in my, in my pegs all day just to put a few fish in the net. Like I say, it might only put five or six fish in my net throughout the day, at five or six different periods, but that could be 25 pound. Right, well I've had an hour and 15 minutes now. And it's steady, do you know what I mean? I'm well on for me, my target weight, so that one gives me 30 pound. I, mean, I reckon I'm on 30 pound with that lovely little carp. But it's weird and I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I'm, I'm catching more than anyone on this lake. But I don't know if I should be doing something different to catch a bit better. I've just said I've been feeding me meat line, but I've just talked to Rich about it and I don't like that because I don't like the chance of catching on that because there's literally, it doesn't seem as if there's anything in deeper water. There's no bubbles on the whole lake, which are normally a really good indicator that there's some fish in the, in the deeper channel down the middle, which tells me there's pretty much not a lot of chance of me catching there. Although I've not gone in the deep, deepest water, I've gone up a bit, but still, I'm not feeling the deeper water. And my far bank line, it's steady, but weird. I've just tried catapulting a bit of bait and it made it horrible. It made it dead weird. I, I wasn't getting, I was getting a lot more indications, but I didn't put nothing in the net. So for 10 minutes, I just, I missed half a dozen bites which is probably because the, the stamp of fish has gone a bit smaller and they're a bit crazy and a bit erratic in the way they feed. So, so I've used my catty to, I feel like I've attracted quite a few of my peg now. It's actually colouring up a little bit now as well. I'm seeing the, the, the bottom change colour on that far bank showing me there's definitely a few fish rooting about. Or oh, an odd fish, it's not, definitely not black yet. But I think it's best at the minute to carry on putting my little pile in and sitting over the top sort of setting a trap so I've toyed with the idea of swapping it to micros and expanders but I'm a little bit worried that that'll change the uh, stamp of my fish there are quite a few little f1s and little carp getting involved and I think by swapping it to micros and expanders I will catch more fish but I'll weigh a lot less just because I think they'll overrun my peg, plus there's a chance of spoiling my peg by too, putting too much bait in over there with it. So I'm going to stick with just hard four mil pellets across. Put in a minute, although it's a little bit early, possibly. 
they're erratic when I hook them. They're going nuts, which tells me they're not very settled at all. They're quite spooky, which I suppose is what you'd expect for this time of day. It's, it's still very, very early. Oh, he's a crazy one. Yeah, he's a bit of a crazy one. He's a big one as well. So when I'm playing them, I'm seeing quite a few fish. This one is a bit nuts and it's gone. Um, I'm seeing quite a few fish swimming about now, so they're definitely waking up and getting a bit lively. That one's had me, that one. I don't know if that were foully yucked or not. What have we got on? I say I've got a medium gauge yuck. Which are them Preston things, them KKM ones. So I'll have me 911s for me delicate fishing if I want to catch some F1s and it's, it's been a bit more tricky or these KKMs for when I've got to pull a little bit so I've only got a small one I've got a 20 because it's quite a, a big 20 if that makes sense but it just gives me a bit more pulling power if I need it and where with this elastic there's no chance of straightening any hooks out well, it seems about right to be honest at the moment I was worried at the start that I need, may need to be a bit more delicate, but I don't. They're, they're pulling like mad, and there's plenty of carp feeding. So I think it'd be silly to to step it down. So I've got to just be a bit patient. I was talking to the bailiff before. I was speaking to Mel, and he reckons it has been the last few weeks or last few matches, really. It has been quite a, a not a slow start, but a a steady start on these before it's they're really having to feed late on. It's typical of any commercial, I suppose, but I've got to keep that in mind is to not try and push it too hard in the early part of the match. Just be happy with what's going on in my net before I can push it when a lot more fish start feeding later on. If they do, but I can't see why they shouldn't. It feels nice, it's warmed up a bit. A little bit too bright if I want to moan about something, but so it's not scorching like it has been, so they should still have a little feed. I thought we'd be seeing a few more now, though, with it. See, it hasn't half warmed up last hour. I thought we'd be seeing a few more sort of muggers about, but I've not seen any. It could be the sort of lake where they like hiding under the cover. You often find that on these sort of venues, that even in the sunshine, they'd rather stay in the, in the shade of the far banks. There's plenty of cover all along the, every lake. I think that's where they're going to be hiding, which is why I'll keep on catching on this, because they'll just keep swimming up and down that far shelf. That was shockingly missed. So you can see that mud, I keep seeing mud puffing up. Not on top of me bait weirdly, to the left and right of it. Which I've really, I've tried to keep in control of my feed to not feed enough to spread. Just feed enough so it gets cleaned out pretty much every cast. So there shouldn't be much bait there, but that can be another thing that tells me that they're not really confident, they're not racing into my feed spot. They're sneaking around it and picking oddens up, which is what the typical of proper carp, the clever buggers, they don't want to go right on top of your feed until, until they're there in enough numbers with enough confidence to do so. Another reason why I should have possibly had a, a slightly deeper one a bit closer to me. But I knew that, that's just me being not quick enough getting ready. You'll see, they're starting to feed differently now. Before it was, I'd put my pot in and I'd sit and wait a few minutes and one would come in with peg, I'd get a bite, I'd catch it. Now it seems as if the, I feed my bait, they're rushing in quite quick, eating a bit of it. I get a few indications and then it fizzles out and one doesn't come back in my peg. So if I miss the bite anyway. So I may need to be a bit more proactive and do a bit more shipping in and out, keep putting that pile back every time I think it's disappeared. So I know that I'm fishing over something. How the flipping heck did I miss that? Andy would be ashamed of me missing them, wouldn't he? They're just liners, he'd say. He'd say. But I'm going to plod on. So I'm going to give this another 20 minutes. And then I think, hour and a half in, no, a bit longer, hour and, in fact, I'm going to give it two hours. 
two hours in, I'm going to feed this my long eggs to the pallet. Just so I've got all, all my lines going. Because I do think we might catch some early today because there's been the odd fish and there's one just moved there then off that weed bed. There's been an odd fish around down the edge so I think we could have a, a few early fish off it. So I'm going to get everything going and see what happens. Right, it's gone weird. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is feed a little bit of bait down the edge. So it's not something I normally want to do. I'm going to try and not kill my cameraman. And I'm just going to give him one little pot right on the edge there. So they're plumbed off nice and flat right in front of that next pallet. Just to try and give me somewhere to rotate because that ain't playing at all. There's, there's still an odd fish in my peg across. But they're not really feeding, do you know what I mean? There's so few there that I'm struggling to get bites. So the plan is to just nick one more across and then I'm gonna get everything going. So I've been pinging my thing. Um, so I've been feeding me, me meat short. I'm gonna have a quick go on that in a minute. And then I'm gonna try and rotate all three lines just to catch one fish off each. So it definitely feels that nothing's settling today. Nothing wants to be in your peg. Fish are whizzing all over the place. Slime my hands. I'm saying they're not in big groups feeding. So I've got to be a bit more disciplined and say just try and pick my fish off the three different places if they'll let me. So I can see some fish, they keep hanging around. There's a great big pampas grass down my me, me left hand edge. I think it's pampas, this green stuff. I can see them hanging around just off the edge of it. So they're the ones I want to drag in and hopefully catch down the edge later on. If they are hungry, so that the cat in, it, it's ever so weird. It's, it's bringing an odd fish into my bag, definitely, but I can't pin them down and catch them. I mean, even though I put my little pile in, I try and give them something to, well, it's a bit messy, but yeah, I try and put my little accurate pile in to get them to home in on something. So it was just short then. Um, but then they're not settling at all when I'm catting and it's not having the, the effect I need it to have. It's not attracting numbers in. So there's pretty much just as many fish coming into me peg if I cup and sit and wait. So the catting has been discarded for the time being. There's also no fish um, feeding shallow. There's no fish eating the pellets off, off the grass or anything like that. There's no fish sucking. So I definitely want to calm things down now. I'm still on target for the weight I need-ish. I've got 30 odd pound. And so I only need another 10 pound in the next half hour or so to put me on 20 pound an hour, what I've been catching, or what I need to get to 100 pound. But it's at this point of matches that you really have to set back and not go for it. I've done it so many times that when you see it just fading like this, trying to push it, it can completely wipe your peg out altogether now if I were to, to really start feeding quite regular, make loads of noise and whatever else. It, it just knacker it. You can see by how they're feeding, how they're whizzing about. You see a few crews in, they're, they're flying all over the peg. That feeding lots of bait regularly isn't going to be the way to go at the moment. Not until they calm down a bit. So I need to just sit and wait. Really sitting wet. I've been through like three different spells on this far bank now. And the first spell was nice and settled with carp, with proper commons and mirrors feeding. Then it went a little bit erratic with some F1s feeding. And now I'm catching nothing. I mean, nothing seems to be feeding. The other one's coming to look, but I'm not catching, which is quite weird. But I need for the next spell to happen now, I need something else to start having a go. Hopefully, them carp to start feeding again, which they should do and then I can have another little run. So it's really, it's just a case of not doing anything silly in the meantime to affect the chances of, of me getting a run. So finally there, I've upped one, whether it's in the mouth or not, I don't know. Yeah, it is. Well, we're being patient, at least I'm catching a fish every 10 minutes. 
instead of getting loads of indications and being happy with how many fish we take, but putting nothing in my net, that's no good. Keep an eye on that edge. I'd expect to see something there. It's a lovely depth down that edge. Right, almost in seconds, everything sort of changed a little bit. In there, I've gone across, caught a couple. But my whole peg sort of changed. It's as if the, there's a lot more carp swimming about. And I've also seen one down the edge where I fed that bait. Straight away, I've seen one come on it. So I'm gonna have a quick little sneaky look and see if there's anything down there. So I've got, so I've plumbed up, I've got a bit more, I've got about 22 inches down the edge, maybe a little bit more. So I've got a nice positive 4 b 14 to float. Um, a four inch hook length with a bulk right on top of it to keep it really, really stable. And I'm literally just gonna go down there with an expander on. I'm just gonna put a little formal expander on to begin with. I've got a 16 hook, so it'll just help keep it on a lot better. I've got a new little posh pot that you'll have to wait and see. And I'm just going to put some expanders in me, uh, some micros in me pot, not a full pot, I'm just going to give them half one. Press them down. I need to make these pallets a little bit wetter. But what I'm going to do now is proper push me far line because I feel I can, all of a sudden, they started responding to the catapult as in they were sucking, they were coming having a look at the noise. So for five minutes, I'm just going to keep pinging some bait across. Just while I have a quick, quick try down the edge just to see if they're coming in. So I'm going to go right to, right to where we plumbed up. I'm going to turn my pot, put my bait in. Chip in and sit there and wait. So my, my lovely little trap is set. I'm going to dot that float down a little bit when I come back in. I don't like having lighthouse floats, that needs another number 11 on it. But I'll do that in a sec. So it's so quick with me edge fishing, I don't want to spend loads of time there waiting for something to happen. They're either there or they're not. So if I don't drop in and get an indication very quickly, which I've just had, then I would have been off it really, really quick. I wouldn't have been wasting time there. What I'm not happy about is that hideous float I've got on that's about that high out of the water. So I'm gonna give it five more seconds. I'm gonna whiz back. Put a shot on that. No, that's not looking pretty, is it? A big, horrible float sticking out water. Just to find that the more bristle you have, just check that expander's not floating. No, the more bristle you have, the more the fish feel it, and you don't see as much either. Just pop an 11 on. Just gonna give it up. One more go. Yeah, give it one more go down the edge because there was definitely a fish there. No, I feel like everything's sped up a little bit now. There's definitely fish. There's fish across. I don't know whether there's any on this short meat line. I keep throwing some bait in there. Not a lot, but a little. So you keep pinging them pellets across. Unfortunately now, by pinging, I've almost committed to that now, that way of feeding, because that's going to make a, a lot of mess in my peg. It's going to spread bait all over that like hole I've got across. So there's almost no going back once I've started doing it to the extent that I have. Put my pile in. A million times better that. Maybe a bit lower again, but we'll leave that for now. I can handle that. So if I'm having such a, a heavy rig as well, it's going to keep it in place. I mean, if them fish come and start wafting about all over the place, 
my rig's still going to keep my bait in the position. I want it to be in right over the top of that little trap that I've set. So I'm quite particular with how I fish the edges now. I don't like putting big amounts of bait in. I, I believe it's pretty much the worst thing you can do. And that it can get loads of fish in your peg, great. But it becomes very, very difficult to catch them once you've put two or three pots of bait in, or big pots of bait, because it spreads all over the place and gives them such a wide area to feed on. That's not what I want. There's fish in my peg, but I don't know what's going on there. So I've gone in with a, a little formal expander to start with. So there's fish there, definitely. Moving about then. Yeah, we've gone in with a formal expander, see what happens. They may need leaving for a little bit. I'll say I've, I've rushed down here for a quick go just because I saw something. I saw, um, I saw a bit of mud kicking up down the edge. So I thought, let's give it a quick go and see what happens. But I may have been a little bit too keen, too quick. Just give it one more minute. See, there's a fish there. What's that? Is that a carp or a little fish? I don't know. There's definitely been an odd fish in the peg, but I haven't had a bite. See, by using a, a, such a positive bulk so close to me, hook, like I say I've got that, increases the stability, but it also makes it very, very distinguishable between liners and bites. I mean, any bites will be nice, fast, sudden, like, like proper stabs or dinks, or I mean, they'll, they'll fly right under quite a few of them. Whereas your liners are much slower wobbly about affairs so but that solid bulk makes it so easy to, to work out what's what whereas with me I mean more delicate rig that I fish across you, you don't get that with a, a strung out rig no don't feel like that's gonna go No, I fancied that then as well, really fancied that for a quick bite. Right, well I've just had an horrible half hour to be honest. I've just been almost not through the fishing, just really unsettled and skipping about and not, just not being patient. I mean, they, they dragged me down that edge because I kept seeing them down there. I've had two goes down there and I haven't caught a fish, but there's definitely fish coming in, which is a good sign for later, but so it's wasted a good 15 minutes of me trying that a couple of times. Um, I've had a little go with short meat line as well. I've just give it one quick five minutes and I caught fish on that. I did catch an F1, which is a good sign, but I definitely think it's going to be a nick and odd fish line today and not a sit and concentrate on it line, catch numbers of fish. So that, that's ticking over nicely. My cross line, however, oh, that's still being weird. <laughs> I'm still being dead weird. I, I've just caught one then. I've just landed one about five pound then. And there's definitely more fish coming into my peg now. I've been catting quite a bit when I've not been fishing it to try and get the fish there. And I've dropped on it. I've had an F1. Then I foul looked a big fish, lost that. And then I said, just had one in the mouth then, five pound. Which is good. It shows the carp are definitely, they're thinking about it now. They're, they're getting a bit more lively. They're coming to have a look for the bait. I've even had a couple sucking at the grass now. So there's definitely a few more uh, fish responding. However, the catch rate, what's end, ended up in my net, has slowed right down. So I'm probably up to, I might have 35 pound, maybe 40 pound. Yeah, between 35 and 40 I've got, but I'm two and a bit hours in, two hours, 20 minutes in, which knocks me off my pace. Definitely really to, to level things up if you like. It'd be nice to catch a quick 30 pound in the next hour just to get things back on track. Whether that's gonna happen or not, I really don't know. I feel it with the time of day now, it's, what are we on? About half 12, something like that. Yeah, catching little weird fish as well, which is good. But yeah, with it being this time of day, with the sun being as bright as it is, 
I think the next hour is probably going to be my most difficult. So I may have to put up with falling even further behind on me, on my target weight. But then I really am pinning all my all my chances in catching short and down the edge later on. Like I said this morning, this far bank line, it's nice and steady for a few fish. But it's not the, the winner, it's not the way I'm going to catch a load of fish. So I don't want to be spending the last two hours on this unless I have to. So I really want to be spending them short, so I'm just still just flicking the odd little, little bit of mute on that one. So interestingly with my meat as well, I've, I've really looked after my meat before I got here this morning. That's, that's the one bit of prep that I actually did. And I cubed up a couple of tins of meat, I've just done six mils. So only two tins that you don't feed a lot of bait here. It's not a lump it in place, it's just little and often. So two tins is plenty. But what I've actually done with it is I've washed it a couple of times by putting a kettle of boiling water over it a couple of times just to get all of the fat off it. What that does, it makes it sink as fast as possible. So there's no, when I throw it in, there's no bits of meat floating about it straight down. I mean, if I'm fishing shallow, I might leave it as it is. But because I want to fish just on the bottom, the last thing I want is meat, which is notoriously floaty abouty, going all over the place in my peg and stopping the fish from settling on the bottom. So even more so that I'm feeding it in a, a slightly deeper area in my peg. So with what I've got, with, with how I've done my meat, hopefully it will help to keep them fish on the bottom more, as long as my feeding's correct and I'm not feeding too little too often. Because that in turn, that have the same effect of bringing them off the bottom. So I'm trying to keep the feeding of that short line, literally to, whenever I've got my top gets in my hand, whenever I've caught a fish in this long line, I'll chuck a couple of bits of meat. So I'm not feeding it very often at all. The rig's been a bit weird there. What's going on? Fish, it's, it's strange. It's so 20 minutes ago, I felt like my peg was full of carp. But they were all over the place. They were they were cruising all over the place. Not not feeding really, but I felt like there were loads of carp. And now I feel like there's none. There are no very few. So I don't know what's going on. But we're going to carry on. So another, another 15 minutes on this line, see what I catch. Then I'm going to drop on that short line, on my meat line, have five minutes on that. Just keep having five minutes. Every 20 minutes, I'm going to have five minutes short just to put one or two fish in the net. And hopefully I'm going to catch some down that edge, but I've, I've not seen, I don't think, a fish get caught down the edge yet. I think that's a massive one. Not in the mouth. I don't know. What I'm going to do, I'm going to plumb up again because I just feel that my rig's sitting a little bit funny. Let's see, that wasn't in the mouth, that one. I'm just going to quickly plumb up again and see what's going on. So at the moment, I'm not happy. I'm not going to do any winning if I keep performing like this. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I've got an hour and a half left now. And it's just gone proper weird today. I don't even know what I've got. I reckon I've got 45, 50 pounds. It's just got, it's just been such a struggle. The middle two and a half hours of the match. It's just dead random, to be honest. I've, I've knackered it. I should have just sat there been really patient and caught a fish every every 10 minutes something like that and I'd probably would have put 20 pound an hour in my net but I keep trying to force it or I have tried to force it I've catted quite a bit on that far bank which is it has brought fish into me peg but it's made them quite difficult to catch when they come into me swim and now there's very few fish actually actually swimming about I'm not catching a lot now there's not many new fish coming into me swim um, and my other lines they just haven't happened. So I've had one F1 on this short line on my meat. That really, really hasn't happened today, but that's noticeable all around the lake. No one's caught any fish in deeper water today, which is, to be fair, that's what I expected this morning. I thought everything would be 
edge dwelling and on the far bank today with it being high pressure. But to me, all me hope now is that that edge kicks in. But I don't know if it's going to, I really don't. It, it doesn't look inviting now. The sun's whacking it really, really strong. There's no shade down there. But maybe, so I think I've got to be realistic. If I can catch another 20 pound in the last hour and a half, that'll give me 70 odd. Maybe 65, 70 odd. I need to hope that that won't be a mile off. That's the only chance I've got to tell you that it is a tricky one. It is definitely fishing harder. This is say, one of the better pools that are in. And it's fished really tricky on here. No one's caught much at all. I'll definitely be there or thereabouts, either myself or Lewis or the chap on the end. But we're all similar, we're all like 40 to 50 pounds. There's a couple of carp swimming on the top. I've, I've tried several times with it, my shallowy mugging rig, to be just sit there patiently for like five minutes and see if I get an opportunity. And I've had a couple of chances and I've had one bite that I missed. But it's not even worth doing that. It, it's, been a right funny day today. So I think with them just finishing spawning, it's as if they're just not that bothered. Just not that bothered. He just snuck that one. That was a proper naughty one, that, but gotta be done. That we're dangling it in his mouth. He's not happy about it either, is he? Really not happy. He's gonna have me this one. This one's gonna win. Oh, maybe not. No, he might have changed his mind. He could have had me then. Another wiggle on his tail, he'd have won. Oh, wait, oh he, he's decided he wants to now. Let's just see what happens. He'll be impatient when I've got to land everything I can here. So this will be another five pound. So well on the way to me little 20 pound target for the last, last bit of the match. It's been a shame, it's just not quite been as good as good as I expected it to be today, unfortunately. It's just not been great, it's still been lovely days fishing. But with the weather being up and down a little bit. So they've just gone from chewing the brains out at the weekend and then having a bit of a spawn. And now they're, they're all just seem to be a bit sulking and a bit confused at what's going on. It's not massive, so I was hoping that might be a, a bit of a bonus eight pound of that, but no, it's still only the stamp I'm catching. When I do get a bite, Ooh. water will keep plodding on. So I've not fed that edge line too much. I fed it with about three or four little pots of micros just because if they do start coming in, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it with a load of bait for just two or three fish at the end. So if I keep him, my bait limiter down here, hopefully if they do have a feed, it, it might be worth three or four of these last, last half hour. I might get three or four bites, but that could be, say 20 pound if they do turn up. Things nice and delicate. I'm gonna have a little shout at myself for trying to force it too much. As I say, my match is nicer now, it's sort of planned out that I know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna fish this line and the edge. So there's no need that meat line, that ain't gonna kick in, not a chance. So it's pointless doing it. So I can just concentrate solely on these two lines. So you can just pick a few fish off. I missed that. This is how it's going today, isn't it? Oh, man. Yeah. Like, weirdly, I didn't think, though. No, he didn't have it, have it, but 
I'd have been patient, I'd have had him. Like ready. Yeah. Good. I thought, to be honest, my head as well and truly gone. Now these fish have done my head in last hour. And I can't catch nothing. I, I simply can't. Whatever I do isn't the right thing. I mean, I can sit and be really, really, really patient uh, and maybe hook a fish on the bottom in the back. But half the time I'm just foul looking one when I mean I can be really patient, wait for a bite, get one, and then I'll foul look it. Which is is a problem. So I can't get this edge to work. I've just been down the edge now. And had a really, really quick go. And as soon as I went in, I fed my bait, I put it in, had an indication, the fish bowed off, and then never had another indication after that. So I don't know what's happening, it's just as if they don't want to feed. They really don't. It's as if there's fish all over the place having a, a little bit of a mooch. But they're not eating, they're, they're just sort of sulking. Yeah, they're just, see, and even when I get, oh, I get a bite like that, I've had three bites and I'm mugging as well. And I've missed all three of them. Just everything's so erratic and, and whizzing about today, nothing's settled at all. So I don't know where to go. Mel's thingy, Mel's just had a walk around the bailiff. He reckons it's fishing really, really difficult. He reckons 70 pounds may be enough to win today. Which I'm definitely in the, I'm in with a chance of catching 70 pounds. So as long as I can have one more little spell. There's a fish swimming in there. I'll have a look. So I think again, I'm forced to have a shout at myself. Again, I've, I've yet to actually catch a fish on this rig yet. I'm, I'm still keep messing about, having a little go of it. I think I need to throw it out of reach so I can't get hold of it again, to be honest. But what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have one last go across, literally by feeding and fishing on the bottom. And I'm going to give it 10 minutes, see what happens. I'm not. No, I'm telling lies, I'm not, because there's mud coming up down the edge. So I'm going to go straight down the edge now after giving it. I've just given them a bit of a, a little bit of a pot. So I'm going to just go straight down the edge and see what happens. Turn my phone off. Right. So it's about right. As soon as you put the mugging rig down as well, there's one there, one there. You fish all over the place. So you really am in a, a proper tiver. Already I'm shipping this out. I feel like I should be on something else. It's, Definitely not been a, a good day. So the chap next to me as well, he's just started catching down the edge. I'm seeing that two and two chucks down this edge towards me. So the fish starting to, to feed down the edge, definitely. Here we go. About flipping times. So that's how I needed it to be. Why it hasn't been like that before, I've no idea because there have definitely been fish in the edge. But so as soon as they get a bit of confidence, it's so flipping easy to catch them. Not the great big ones I was hoping for, but it's catching. It's a little tiny cat, but it doesn't matter as long as it's a cat. It's a carp, I'm happy. I'm going to keep 
keep on with this, see how many we get. What did I put on them, Rich? I put a six mil expander on, just to try and make it stand out a bit, because I put quite a bit of bait down there now. That's quite a lot of uh, micro pellets down there now. So I've also fed ground bait on this really short one, just down here, where I, I can see that, because it's a little bit shallower as well, and nothing's come on that at all. And I'd have been able to, if a fish was on that peg, I'd have been able to see it. I've seen nothing down here. There. Now, if it's going to work well, I'm going to drop on this and get another one straight away. I'm a bit doubtful, but you never know. Give it long, I'll give it, give it a minute. So if they're responding quick enough, I'll get a bite. If not, I may have to try and catch one fish off each, try and catch a fish off uh, on the far bank and come back to the edge, catch one and just keep rotating it if there's not many fish feeding. I think that's how it's gonna have to be, to be honest. I can't see them rocking up in millions of numbers. It's just not been good enough all day for them to do that. that indication then? Yeah, a bit of a liner then. I think that's a fish in my peg. It's definitely not convincing that there's lots of fish there though. So it's still a good sign, at least I've caught one down there now. It's looking good for a, a slight spell. I think I've got to just be realistic of what I potentially need to catch in the last little spell. So 15, 20 pound more will give me a great chance of, of winning. I'm going to catch that fish across. There's one sucking on the grass. So just while he's here, I'm going to whiz in. And it might let them settle down, the ones down the edge. So we've got a little diddy rig set about eight inches deep. Where's he gone? He was there a second ago. I think that edge is going to work now, me Rich. I'm feeling it now. There's a little bit of mud coming off. Yeah, I feel like there's fish feeding now. Yeah, there's possibly an odd fish feeding. If it's 10 seconds, if I don't see him in 10 seconds, I'm coming off this. No, I'm not even going to that long. What happened then, was it? You know, I reckon you know when you pick that rig up, me. <laughs> the siren goes off, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The eyed. Quite smooth as well, isn't it? There's a hole in the very bottom as well. Yeah. So don't half make a difference. Nope. Don't want them doing that. Don't really don't want them going. Get wrapped up and crazy. Not sure if I get a potential bigger one, this. What that did do then though, it, it scared the fish in my peg because it went, was it leaving my peg so nastily, so erratically, it made everything go nuts. So as soon as I land this, I'm just going to give it a quick back to bloody F1, that's why. I'm just going to give it a little pop really quick. a lot, just like twice as much as I'd be feeding with my pole cup. And just to get him back in my peg, then hopefully I'm going to shift across, catch one. And I can get back down the edge then. So if there were lots of fish feeding, they'd have gone straight back down there. 
but because there's not, I'd much rather play it safe and give myself a chance of putting a fish in the net instead of sitting and waiting on a peg that there's not a lot of fishing down the edge. Let me go in on deck and just have a look. Right, well, I'm into my last 15 minutes and it proper has, it's, it's just gone, completely gone. I can't get this rig in now, what's going on with this? Yeah, this edge has driven me round the bend, down the edge, I've had a couple on it, I've had a couple on it, I've had two on it, yeah, I have. But there's like, there's the odd fish coming to me peg, but I can't get a clean bite off them, I get a few wobbles and never get a clean bite, just simply through there not being enough, there's no competition whatsoever. And now there's a load of bait down there. So I've got nearly no chance of catching on that, um, on that edge line, but I keep on having to try it because some of the fish that I've seen get caught down the edge, but they're massive, they're, they're eight to 10 pounds, which is two or three of what I'm catching across. My rig's gone funny across now as well. Tell fuck what's happening. So, in a nutshell, I ain't got a clue what to do. So I could do with one more little run. If I catch two more carp, then I'll have 70 pounds. But if I don't, then I'm gonna fall short. So there's people on this lake that have, they've definitely caught me off. They may have even overtaken me by now. We'll be very close. Have a proper bite. And an F1 whizzed out me peg. Yeah, it's definitely a few people have caught, but no one's bagged. I mean, it's only odd fish getting caught, so I don't feel like I've done anything massively wrong. I just think I've not been cautious enough today. I should have been. I should have really kept it delicate today and fished for 70 pound. I mean, then I think we'd have been able to catch 70 to 80 pound if I'd have been nice and sensible, but because we've pushed it, it's not going to happen. So there's still a very, very odd fish to, to be caught across. That's why I keep going back onto this rig. I can get an odd random bite. I'm yet to catch a fish on my shallow rig. Well, I've missed a couple of bites on it. Yeah, the meat's short to waste the time. So <laughs> literally all I've got is all my faith in this on my edge to, to chuck a couple of fish up. But so unfortunately it's not gonna happen today. There's not enough fish feeding. Yeah, just get a random weird indication like that, but my rig's not right. There's something up with my rig now. Have we lost a shot, or is he sitting up? We've lost a shot. we got two I'm gonna bite I'm more than effing up there now.
like coming in from up there, aren't they? Canelli were bang on like, weren't he? Proper bang on, I was going to get one then as well. That one wobbling a little bit then. Ah, well. Right, go on, let's do some talking as a back up. Right. Well, I'm not happy. I don't, I don't know what went on there. It was a proper weird day, that. It's just a, a typical moody day when they don't really want to feed, to be honest. So I've, I've caught the vast majority of my fish across on that line. That's proved to be my best line, which I thought it'd be my steady line for the first few hours, which is, is why I fished there. But I, I thought all my fishing was going to be done this side of the canal when they were going to have a chew. But that definitely hasn't happened. They've been really, really spooky. It's as if they want to be uh, in all the cover across. That's where they've been happiest. So we caught a few over there, but I just couldn't make these edges work. My short line was definitely a waste of time. That was just too deep and they didn't want to be in that depth. But my edge line, I don't know. I've, I've definitely not got that right. So I've just had one to finish on it. I've won about four pounds to finish on it. But they've been coming in for the last hour that I've been fish coming in. So I could have caught a few more. I think I'd have been better fishing just down a little bit deeper with a different bait. Maybe just tapping in six pieces of meat or a couple of bits of corn, something big and heavy that goes straight to the bottom and sit there. I think that'd have been a much better option than uh, lumping in micros, or oh, not lumping in, but feeding micros the way I have. I think I'd have caught a few more on that. But other than that, I don't know what to change. I, I should have just been more negative. That's definitely been my issue today. And I suppose it's the mentality that I've got at the moment with fishing the matches that I've been doing or qualifiers where you've got to win. It's very hard to get into that. Oh, just make the most of it and really nurture every peg. It's not how I've been fishing, but it's what I should have done today, definitely. I should have picked on but it was going to be a difficult day. I said, and just, just been happy with what I was catching. I should have just plodded along and I'd definitely have another 20 or 30 pound in these nets. But nothing I can do about that. I, th I think I've won this lake. I think Lewis will be very close over there on, I think he's on about peg four or five. I don't know what the numbers are. But Lewis will be very close. So other than that, we'll see what the other lakes do and see how we get on. The other little ones in. Yeah. I don't know. What's in there? 31. We've got 40. It's a big net. Big net. Proper fish net. 45. I'm with it. 48 two. Thank you, lovely. Right, so we had a, not the day I wanted to be honest. We ended up with 90 pound, which I got a bit lucky. I managed to win with that. I think there's been a, a 70, a 60, and a 60, and whatever else. So we, we've been. We've had 20 pounds, but I'm still not happy. It ain't about just winning on this. It's only a little midweek at the end of the day. I definitely should have fished so much more negative on that far bank. And I'd have ended up with probably 120 pounds today with the size of fish. I didn't realize how big the average stamp was. Most of them were six pounds, the, the better cap. So really a bit of a lesson today in just um, sort of not going for it. I mean, sit back a little bit when you don't need to go for it, when it's just a nice open match or a team match or whatever, by being a little bit more sensible and not making like weird decisions, just so much as catting, that definitely has cost me £20 today just picking my catapult up. So just little lessons like that, hopefully, that will show you just not to mess it up as I have today. Mm -hmm.